Here's what the Lord's put on my heart. I'm not asking for anybody to raise their hand. In fact, I'm telling you, please don't raise your hand. If this happened before Messiah came into your life, I just was going to rhetorically ask, has anybody ever had a DWI? See, I didn't want you to raise your hand. Good. Okay, nobody did. Nobody likes DWIs. Uh, my wife and I, and I guess I'm speaking for myself personally, I abhor drinking and driving. If in America, you know, I've said this publicly, and I'm, it's, it's just a rhetorical question for you to think about. I wonder if Yeshua was on earth today. I know drinking wine at a meal, it's a Jewish thing. Yeshua drank wine. But I can promise you that my opinion is he would never drink any alcoholic beverage and get behind the wheel of a vehicle. I just don't believe that. And with what's going on with alcohol in our nation and worldwide, but in our nation, the, the number of families that have been torn up by alcoholism, the number of people that have lost their lives on the road with drunk drivers, it just is appalling to me. My wife and I, I think mainly because of that and the stigma that's attached to it, we just have been teetotalers all our life. I'm sorry I'm not here to offend anybody. You know, I know a lot of people drink wine at a meal, and if that's your deal, that's between you and the Lord. He's just led us to, to do what we do and, and probably used my disdain for what alcohol represents in our society today. So not, not condemning anybody, not meaning to do that, but a DWI, I'm, I, that's what I titled my message, DWI. You're like, boy, this is going to be a doozy. So listen, I'm even going to end with a good DWI. You're like, what in the world is he talking about? Well, let's go and let's, and let's see. I hope this is working. If it's not, it says it's on and it's not doing it. So they might have to run it for me. I'm going to try the other way. Will it do it that way? No. Okay. So maybe they didn't even get it. Ah, oh. D. Way to go back there. D. Everybody read it. The deal is still on. And if we could go to the scripture, let's see about the scripture. We're going to talk about, this is really three messages in, in one. And each message would take about 35 minutes. So we're going to do about an hour and 45 minutes in about 20 minutes. After these things, the word of Adonai came to Abram in a vision saying, Do not fear, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, my Lord Adonai, what will you give me since I am living without children and the heir of my household is Eliezer of Damascus? Then Abram said, look, you have given me no seed, so a house-born servant is my heir. Then behold, everybody say, then behold. The word of Adonai came to him saying, this one will not be your heir, but in fact, one who will come from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look up now at the sky and count the stars if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, so shall your seed be. Then he believed in Adonai and he reckoned it to him as righteousness. Okay, you can turn that off for a minute. Let's think about this. I've preached this before, so this is an easy one to, to kind of bring into a nutshell in about five minutes. But the deal is still on with God. That's what God is telling Avram at that point. He's like, listen, can you hear the heart of Avram telling God, God's trying to say the blessing is still on. He says, yes, I get it. There's going to be an heir in my house. He's willing to settle for second best. He's a servant in my house. I, I grant I don't have, Sarah and I do not have a son, so I get it. Eliezer is going to be my heir. And God, Abba, the father of Abraham, he says, you listen to me. 
you and Sarah are going to have a son out of your own bodies together. You're going to have a son. It, because, Abram, you might be willing to settle for second best, but as far as I'm concerned, everybody say it, the deal is still on. And people, listen to me. God has spoken things into your lives at times, and, and you think, God, that's, that's huge. Lord, I can't make that happen. It's, if this is you, you're going to have to do it because I, I can't do anything about it. I, I can't make this work. If this word is from you can, you, can you just see Abraham? Lord, every, the whole world, the whole earth, and, and they're going to bless me. You're going to bless me. And it's going to be a blessing to the whole world, Lord. <laughs> I can't do anything about that. So we've got the D in DWI. The D is for the deal is still on. In many of your lives, I'm telling you, the Lord of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is trying to break through even this morning to tell you the deal is still on in your life. Quit saying you'll settle for second best. What I told you I'm going to do, I'm going to do it. You just have to believe me. You just have to believe. And so the second part, the W, the D-W, W, and everybody say it, waiting on Adonai. It's so easy to say. Say it loud. Waiting on Adonai. You can turn it off. We're going to wait a minute. I saw something this week that just really blessed my heart. And I'm going to kind of steal it from a friend of mine up in Dallas and use it for the, the point I want to make in this. I would like to show you how we wait on the Lord. Would you like to see how we wait on the Lord? Here's what we do. God speaks that word and we start the waiting process. And we lay that calling. We lay that thing down on the ground. We just set it there and we say, Lord, <laughs> I can't do anything about it anyway. So I'm just going to leave it there. It's on your altar. Lord, I'm not worried about it. You, you, you have to do it. You, you said it. Lord, it's been two weeks and it's still sitting there on the altar. Lord, I don't care because I can do nothing about it. I just can't, I can't, Lord, I'm just, I don't care. I can't, Lord, it's been two months. Lord, it's been two years. Lord, apparently you're not going to do anything about this. I'm just going to pick it back up. Waiting on the Lord. Oswald says one of the greatest strains in life is the strain of waiting on the Lord. He quotes the scripture, because you did keep the word of my patience. He says, God takes the believers like a bow, which he stretches. And at a certain point, the believer says, I can't stand anymore. But God does not take heed. He goes on stretching because he's aiming at his mark, not ours. And the patience of the believers that they hang in until God lets the arrow fly. Shh. If your hopes are being disappointed just now, it means they're being purified. There is nothing noble within the will of God that the human mind has ever hoped for or dreamed of that will not be fulfilled. Don't jump to conclusions too quickly. Don't jump to conclusions too quickly. One or two things lie unsolved. And the greatest test of all is that God appears as though he were totally indifferent. One or two things lie unsolved in that word that God gave you and you just leave it sitting on the altar and you've been waiting for years, some of you, waiting for years. And it's just, and you just can't help but look over and see it's still over there. One or two things lie unsolved, but the biggest test of all is that when you pray about it, heaven seems indifferent, like it doesn't matter to them. Listen, that's an illusion. God cares, and God is going to make it happen. But you know what we do too often? 
too many times. I've done it myself. You know what we do? We do a DWI. We do the deal is still on. We're waiting on the Lord. And then we pull and put up I, if you would. Do you have I? I have I command Ishmael to appear. <laughs> I told you, you see it works. Yeah. Everybody say Ishmael. Ishmael. Listen, you can turn it off. Ishmael is, is a mistake that you know how it happened. Go ahead and turn it off if you would. You know how Ishmael happened? Because Abe and Sarah decided that they would help God out. I, I just wonder, are any of you willing to be honest today? How many of you have ever had an Ishmael in your life? You, you've, let me see your hands. Oh, look how many of you are so good. That you didn't do it. Uh, so come on. Listen, we've all had Ishmael's in, their, in our lives at times. I, I know in my own life, even as a leader, of sheep, a leader of people. You know what I've done at times? I remember when we, we were going to build this house. And you know what I did? God said he was going to do it. And all the leaders around me, everybody was on board like, let's go. They were saying, you get the word and we'll go. We all are feeling all the shaman. There were like seven or eight of us. All the shamashim, John, the elders, everybody was ready to go. They're like, just go get the word and we'll do it. And so I got the word and God said, do it. And we launched out. And you know what I did within a month or so? I made up a letter fundraising letter. We had never done anything like it. I took it around to a couple of people and sat down with them. And I was going to tell them, we're trying to build this thing and we need so many dollars and blah, blah, blah. And, the, and I only talked to two people. The second one I talked to, I'll never forget it. He was involved he was an entrepreneur that was involved in a lot of messianic work, and he had sponsored, he had financed a lot of messianic work. I thought, well, this guy is going to help us. He's going to give us half the building. And I went out, and I laid everything out to him. I laid my Ishmael right there on the table. Let him look, and he looked it over. And he said, brother, you've got the funds right there in your congregation. And... I tried to keep a straight face because inside I thought, if I thought that, I wouldn't be in your office right now. <laughs> and, and he sent me away empty. And it's like when I got in my car, it's like the Spirit of God said, did I say you were to go have an Ishmael and do this? Is that what I told you to do? I told you I will do this. I will do it. And when we met the first day in this building, I think I told this within the last couple of months, when we met that first day, we marched that Torah scroll down from about a mile away. John, I can still see John, the worship team, up on Donald's trailer. He's, I don't know if he had a tractor. He's got probably pulling it with a Suburban. And, he, and the worship team is rocking along and they're rocking. They're, we're, we're, and the dancers are down on the ground dancing by. And we're walking the tour scroll down here. And we're having, and, and the only two people that knew that we were short, and we were short, we were short a lot of money. <laughs> And, we, and, and, and Donald and I were the only ones. We had gone behind the thing. We had done the numbers. We had, and we're like, gosh, we, we need a, at least $100,000. And But we, we said nothing to anybody else. We just thought, look, this is in God's hands. And that first day after the service was over, a lady met me at the back, and she said, Richard, I just wanted... Beth Messiah to have this and I was like well thank you sis I'm like 
okay, you know, I knew this lady. I thought this is probably 150 bucks. And, and so she said, I want you to open it. And I thought, hmm, maybe it's 250 bucks. And I, <laughs> and I opened it up and it was $145,000. And I thought, four months later, January, that woman came up and said, God's done it again. And this time I'm like, what? I'm like, dude, what do you mean did it again? And it was another check for $200,000. And I'm like, I'm like, Lord, God, and, and, and I haven't done this in a long time. Beth Messiah, I just wanted to thank all the givers, the tithers, the givers in this congregation. You have, you have by the grace of God, you've been used by God to make us the head and not the tail. God has blessed this congregation in ways that are... It, it, Philip and I were talking last week, and, and we were saying, we know a lot of Messianic rabbis in the movement, and we don't know of a one that would not be blessed beyond compare if they were able to partake of what God's let us have here in Houston, in this, in this building, in this people, in, in the work of God's spirit amongst us. People, it's incredible what the Lord has done. God says, if you'll get out of it and leave it alone, I don't know what your deal is with God, whatever he's called you to do, whatever he's shown you to do, but, but listen, we do have a part, and it's just to yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit. But God's the one. If God's called you to do something that you can do, God hasn't called you. God called you to do something you cannot do in your own natural talent. And, and God has to come on the scene and do it for you, do it through you. He, God has to do it. And, and when you get involved with God like that and you learn how to wait on the Lord, then you can have a holy DWI. You know what a holy DWI is? It is the deal is still on. You wait on the Lord like you need to wait on him and you get an Isaac instead of an Ishmael. You get the promised son that God said with two older people, the woman passed age to have children and, and at 99, Avram, and at 90, Sarah, have a baby and name him Yitzhak, laughter. Sometimes that's what I feel when I'm in the presence of the Lord like today. And I look around and I see what God has done. And, I, and I, in my heart, outwardly I'm praising, but in my heart I'm kind of joyfully laughing before the Lord like, God... Forgive me for all the times I've grabbed hold of an Ishmael rather than waiting on Yitzhak, waiting on Isaac. And that's really the heart of my message today, to tell you to wait for God to bring Isaac. Don't get ahead of him and don't grow weary in waiting. You say, Richard, you've got just a few minutes left. Tell me, how do I wait for God? What do I do? Do I just watch TV? No, it's not going to bring it to pass. Listen, here's what you do when you're waiting. You keep calling those things that be not as though they had already happened. You say, Richard, that does not make sense. Of course it doesn't. That's why God said it and said to do it. That's, it doesn't make sense to the natural mind. If you think it doesn't make sense to your mind, wait till you tell somebody what you're doing. <laughs> you haven't seen anything with what you think about it. Wait till you tell your neighbor. You should have seen my wife and me. Of course, I'm t Patsy and I will tell you, you can get so full of this promise and so full of excitement for what God said he's going to do that before Beth Messiah started, we went around the city of Houston and we went to some congregations and they said, and, and people said, what are y'all doing here? And we say, we have a ministry to Jewish people. 
And they're like, w- what's the name of it? And we'd say, Beth Messiah. He's already given us the name. And they said, well, when do you meet? And we say, well, we don't meet yet. And they said, well, where's the place? Well, it's not there yet. And they said, well, what, you said you had a ministry. We do. God promised us we have a ministry. And we went around telling people, we call those things which be not as though they were, as though that it already happened. You say, well, that's crazy. Well, that's what God does. That's what God does. God said, let there be, it's done. God called Abraham, you are a father of many nations. He hadn't even, they hadn't conceived Isaac. He wasn't even conceived in the womb. Jacob was far down the line. Israel was yet, to, it, it, it was just the seed of God's thought. And God said, you are a father of many nations. If God does it, and then he writes it down in the book of Romans for us in the new covenant as spiritual heirs of Abraham. So whether you're here today, a natural heir of Abraham and Isaac, or if you're, if you're just a spiritual seed, non-Jewish that came in and got swept into the kingdom of God. Listen, those promises are to you. You call those things which be not as though they were against hope. You believe in hope that Abraham did it, that he might be called the father of many nations. According to that which was written, so shall your seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body when he was dead, almost a hundred years old. He did not stagger at the promise of God, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He gave glory to God before he saw it come to pass. He gave sacrifices to God before it happened. You, what do you do when you wait? You call those things which be not as though they were. Against hope, you believe in hope. You discount the circumstances. Quit looking on the altar. Leave it alone. You didn't create it. God did. God said it, so leave it alone. And you get full of faith, giving glory to God before you see it. And number five, you're fully persuaded that what God promised, he is able to perform. That's, that's what you do while you're waiting. You know how long it was after we got here before God started a meeting in our house? A year and a half, one and a half years waiting. We'd already heard the word uh, six months before we moved down here. And now we've been here for a year and a half, so we heard the word for two years before anything happened with it. And we just kept telling people, we got a ministry to Jewish people. we got a ministry to the chosen people of Israel. They need to know their Messiah. They need to know that after they come to faith in Yeshua, they can still be Jewish. They can come to synagogue. They can honor the Torah. They, can, they just have to know they're saved by the blood atonement of Yeshua. We have a ministry to tell people that. Two years, and I'm working full-time and... I'm working for a precious father-in-law of mine, but he was a World War II vet, and he was tough, and it was hard. And my wife and I were stretched to the max for two and for over, over two years, and we're just calling those things which be not. Though we're trying, we didn't. We had a, an opportunity for an Ishmael two weeks after we got here. Somebody was starting a congregation, and they heard about us. We heard about them, actually, and we went to their formation planning meeting, and we were there, my wife and I, and and the name of it was Beth Yeshua, and we thought, well, now, wait a minute. God gave us Beth Messiah, Beth Yeshua. That could be. Listen, the, the Ishmaels look so much like an Isaac sometimes. Well, that's so close. Uh, we went home and we prayed about it and we talked about it. I tell you, guys, I said this a couple of weeks ago. If you're going to walk with the Lord, you better walk side by side with your wife. I believe that God sends the word through the husband, but I believe that God can send a confirming word through the wife. It's the way he's always worked with Patsy and me. And we, we went home. We, had, we came down here because God had given me a word and God had confirmed it through her. We came down here with that understanding. And so when this happened, we went home and we, and you know, I don't know which one of us said first, what do you think? I mean, we sat pretty silent in the car going home. What do you think? And I don't know which one said it first. 
because both of us felt it. I don't feel God saying do it. It looks this, we just got here a week ago and they're starting this congregation. It's going to be Beth Yeshua. It's not Beth Messiah, but it's going to be Beth Yeshua. And this other guy's going to lead it. But, but, and we said, it's not God. And I, I called the guy, a, a man from New York had come down to meet with this couple that was going to start it. And they had taken me out on uh, Tuesday night. They, they wanted to meet me. So I met them at a restaurant here. And I said, guys, <clears throat> I'm sorry. God said no. And they're like, okay. We just wanted to know if you and your wife would commit your family to it. So about two months later, I saw that guy again, not the one from New York, but the other guy that was going to lead it. And he said, you know what Steve from New York said? He said, if this family commits, we're going with it. If they don't, we're not. And, and sometimes an Ishmael can be so easy to create. I don't know what's happening in your life with regards to Ishmael and Isaac, but people, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. He, he will not let you down. I, I, I want to I close with a, I didn't have this down to do, but I just feel a prompting from the Ruach. You know, I've, I've spoken about this on several occasions at Beth Messiah in chapter 18 of Luke. It says, Yeshua spoke this parable to this end, that men ought always to pray and not grow weary. And he said, there was in a city a certain judge who didn't fear God and had no regard for man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying, avenge me of my adversary. And the judge wouldn't do it for a while. But after a while, he said, you know, though I fear not God and have no regard for man, I'm going to go ahead and let this widow have what she wants less by her continual coming. She weary me. And the Lord Yeshua said, do you hear what the unjust judge says? And shall not God avenge his own elect who cried day and night unto him, though he bears a long time with them, I tell you, he will avenge them. Beth Messiah? S not speedily. I don't like that. Suddenly. Thank you, Rabbi. Speedily, that's what a lot of our translations say. I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. That gives you the idea that if you ask on Monday, you got it by Friday. If you put it down on that altar, you, you don't have to worry because on Friday you're going to turn around and it's gone. It's done. But that's not what Yeshua is saying. He says, and shall not your father, the Holy One of Israel, shall not he avenge his elect though they cry day and night unto him and though he bears a long time with them I tell you he will avenge them suddenly Amen. nevertheless before you clap listen to his closing line nevertheless when the son of man returns will he find faith on the earth in other words, this process that we're talking about, if you want a DWI that's, that's the deal is still on and you waited and you got Isaac, if you want that, you're gonna, God's going to bear with you a long time. And even when it seems like heaven is indifferent, heaven's never indifferent. God's always working. One or two things lie unsolved. God's working those things out. But when it happens, he will come on the scene. And, and listen, when he comes on the scene after you've been waiting and waiting, it is a sudden, a suddenly happening. Just like he says, behold, the Mashiach shall come into his temple suddenly. And Mashiach showed up in the temple suddenly. Wait on the Lord. We're going we're gonna to close the service. I, I've done pretty much all that, that I could do and say that I felt the Lord wanted me to say. But I want to encourage you people. We talk about this, and Philip, Rabbi Philip and I are trying to really encourage you in this. 
we pray down at this altar at the end. Yeah, we're going to have some party. We're going to have a great time of on it later. But, but, but people, what's going on down here in prayer teams? These people are not magical people. These, these prayer teams are just made up of people who love Yeshua and they want to agree on earth as touching the will of God, the word of God for your life. And so I'm encouraging you today. If, if you have been acting like the deal is not still on, God, I thought you spoke it, maybe, maybe that's over, maybe I missed you. Listen, sometimes we miss God. It's okay if you miss God. If you missed him, you, you recognize it. You, Ron says admit it and quit it forget it it's it's over so but but if you if you still have this in your heart knowing that this this was God and if, Lord I'm sorry that I haven't been acting in faith on it then come up and just pray and recommit it to the Lord and just recommit your life to to just say father I'll wait on you I'll wait on you. You've, you've, you've spoken something to me that I can't do anything about anyway. I can't make it happen. So good. So wait on the Lord. Or if you're here and you just don't even understand where I'm coming from, this, this message was a message for believers in Yeshua. And if you're here and you're not a believer in Yeshua, I challenge you to come down to this altar and don't try him. Come down to this altar and give your heart over to Yeshua. And I promise you, he'll show up in a way in your life that will turn everything upside down. If your life is a mess, well, he'll turn it right side up. So let's pray. Father, I just want to thank you for your mercy over all of us today. I thank you for, for pouring your spirit out upon this congregation. Lord, I have spoken the truth of how great you are and how small we can be sometimes, myself included. Lord, we are nothing without you. We're nothing without you. You alone are king over all the earth. We bow our hearts before you. For those watching online today, Lord, if they're believing, we just agree with them right now. If they're, if they're yielding their lives to you, if they're coming back and saying, I'm sorry I haven't acted in faith, Lord, whatever the situation, just meet them where they are at, Father, and change their lives, change their circumstances today. Let the power of your Holy Spirit rush into their lives. Those that are in the sanctuary here, let the power of your Spirit rush into them. Just let them feel you drawing them. If they don't know you, let them feel the power of your presence drawing them to Yeshua, the Messiah, the atonement for our sins, the Savior of the whole world, the light of salvation to the Gentiles and the glory of his people Israel. Draw them to you, Lord. If they're watching and they don't know Yeshua, open their hearts to understand the power of your spirit, your Ruach HaKodesh. Lord God, touch hearts to come up and get prayer if that's what you want for them today. And let us have a good time of rejoicing later. But Father, the most important thing is what you do in lives of people to make sure they go home changed and differently than they came in. I just thank you for it in the name of Yeshua. Amen and amen.